Hello everyone, welcome. This is F this is from FT Government. This we are interviewing today. Sorry, not inter sorry, not interviewing, interrogating Uncle Hyde. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. um, sorry. There's, there's questions to be had on this. Um, what do you do as your job? What do I do? Um, I teach. I used to teach a lot. Um, but today I do a lot more research and uh, manage researchers in the university most of the time. So if you want me to summarize that, I think I would be an engineer who teaches other kids to become engineers. Yeah. Can you, can you like describe yourself? Like, what is it? Describe yourself. Describe myself. Okay, um, I am. I'm 47 years old. I, I'm. I'm father. So happy Father's Day to those all of those fathers out there. Um, so I I was born in uh, in Penang, but grew up in KL. Um, and uh, both my parents were teachers. Uh, my dad was a uh, was a maths teacher, and my mom was a uh, science teacher so i get i guess uh, putting those two together maths and science made me uh, want to be an engineer so i've always uh, loved uh, tinkering doing different things uh, of course uh, making a wreck of my dad's uh, stereo as well <laughs> uh, when we were kids um, and uh, i think from then on the 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 interest to become an engineer just went on i did my degree in electronics uh, engineering and um, after i did that i decided that i'd be an academic i'll be a professor one day and uh, here i am i'm 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 here at the university at uh, multimedia university where i teach and i do a bit of research yeah so i think that yeah, that probably summarizes what or describe who I am. Oh, did I say my name is Hyro? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't say my name. Sorry. Okay. So you're a professor at U M. And yeah, the same university your dad go went went to. Yeah, and your mom. So you taught my mom and dad. No. I'm Actually, I don't remember. I. Uh, <laughs> I think Adrian's gonna go go skirmish by, by now, uh, but I think I did, yeah, uh, or, may, or maybe not. But we were in the same campus. Uh, um, um, I was uh, I was a tutor back then, so I might or I might have not uh, taught your your dad. Yay! Uh, 
Okay. Um, is your job stressful? Is my job? Uh, sorry. Stressful. Interesting. Stressful. Stressful. Ah, uh, to be very honest, I it's not. Um, the and the reason is really because uh, uh, it's it's very um, it's very challenging. It's very different most of the time. Um, it's not routine. Um, so when we do research um, and we we try to solve problems most of the time, and um, and when we get these problems to solve, they are very uh, interesting. They are very challenging, and of course every time we get them, they are very different, uh, and uh, that makes it very interesting. And I think because of all that put together, uh, makes my job not stressful. It's stressful in a sense that it, it it puts us on our toes. We always got to do different things all the time, different things. Um, but when when I think about it, it's uh, it's nice. It's uh, it's enjoyable. So so I really can't imagine myself working in a very mundane and and sort of you know repetitive so so it's it's not as stressful it's it's a it's stressful in a nice way i would say then where did you do your research Wh where where did you do your research when where 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 um well it's a mix um i think most of the time it's in the lab uh we have lab we have all these different equipments that we use to carry out our research. Um, but then there are times when we go out to meet our customers and uh, these are industrial partners that when we go out and we meet them, we do research with them um, at whatever they are. Uh, for example, we do some work with Petronas. So we do that in their labs. Um, there's also work that we do uh, with um, with medical physicists at hospitals. So there's also times when we do go to hospitals to do our our research. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you research on, and how long do you take? Um, my research is on uh, fiber optics. Um, that's uh, I, I'm quite sure that you have a fiber optics connection to your home that allows you to uh, uh, get connected to the internet. Do you have Unify at home? No, I use Time. What do you use again? Time. Time, right. Yeah, okay. So whether it's Time, whether it's TM Unify, or whether it's uh, uh, DG, um, most likely uh, the connection that you get to your home um, would be made possible by uh, a fiber optic uh, cable. So fiber optic cable it doesn't uh, conduct electricity, but instead what it does is it conducts light. And the light is the medium that uh, carries information, those bits of ones and zeros that you use to communicate over the internet, whether it's social media, WhatsApp, or if you're streaming a video, those one and zeros are now uh, being carried over uh, by light pulses. So these light pulses are using lasers, LEDs, depends on, you know. So my research is into using fiber optics, making them better so that you can stream faster, you can watch, you know, uh, you can download, you can upload at tremendous speed. Um, I also do a lot of research not uh, using fiber optics, not for communications, but they are meant for uh, sensing. So they are you know, trying to sense radiation, for example, in the hospitals. Uh, I do some work with fiber optics used for detecting um, uh, acoustic signals for oil and gas uh, applications. 
Um, so yeah, so that that's what we essentially do. We look a lot. We do a lot of research related to related to uh, fiber optics. Have you seen a, a fiber optic cable before? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very thin. Right? They're like as thin as a hair. Yes. 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 So you've seen them. Yeah. That's good. Maybe when when MCO is over, I can get you over to to my lab and I I. I be able to show you some of the things that we have in the lab, some cool stuff. Would you like to do that? Are there explosives? No, no, there aren't any. Man, I wanted explosives. <laughs> would you rather have one? I would, but I don't think I would be allowed to. Well, the closest to an explosive that we've dealt with is uh, um, yeah, in the oil and gas, uh, in the oil and gas uh, application, um, you actually detect uh, acoustic signals, um, and this uh, sound wave that you detect using the fiber optics, uh, traditionally was uh, using uh, dynamites. There were explosives that produced those sounds, um, but these days, uh, you know, you you. Um, the, what they use is a, what they call as an air gun. So it's a really huge um, cannon-like uh, gun that uh, uses a very high pressure um, and boom, it goes and you get to detect those sound uh, as, a part, as part of you know, some, some applications in uh, oil and gas. Then you shoot projectiles. Say again? Can you shoot projectiles in front of you? Projectiles of? Compressed air. Does it use the... Can, can you actually use... Can you do like... A, can you do like a gun? You can like projectile use it. Like put something inside and launch it like a machine. Pull it. Um, no, it just, uh, it's, it's meant to just create a very loud sound like a bang and uh, that sound wave would travel in the water and eventually travel in the in the ground um, and the fiber optics uh, tend to pick up that sound and uh, this is what is called um, a seismic uh, application uh, or measurement um, and this is all part of the process trying to locate uh, where you have oil uh, in the in the seabed, yeah, or rather under the seabed, yeah. So so with all this uh, information, you can can uh, pinpoint to exactly where the uh, oil is, and engineers would go in and drill and get those uh, oil out of the uh, reservoir. How long does your fire take? How long is that? It take? How long does it take this whole process? Um, it takes, um, I'd say, a year, a year and a half uh, from end to end because they, they've got to look carefully, uh, plan carefully, carry out the work, do some measurements, uh, analyze those results. Uh, because I think it's very expensive to drill and look for oil. So, so they want to be sure that you actually find oil uh, wherever they are looking at, looking for. Is your job hard? Um, yes and no. Um, I, I think it's hard, uh, but in a good sense, it's uh, challenging. Um, so I think everybody needs a bit of challenge in their life. Um, and and it's hard in a nice way, as I mentioned. So it sort of pushes us through to find nice um, solutions, nice uh, creative ways of solving a uh, problem. Is your job easy? Yeah. Yeah. If you were a professor, what would you be? If I wasn't a professor? Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Um, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I would have either um, sold Chakwe Tiao or I would have opened my own cafe doing um, really good brewed coffee. I want to be a 
root coffee. Mm-hmm. Rude. Oh. Rude coffee. I had milk. Like, so if you did have your own coffee store, you would, like, buy the beans, roast the beans, blend the beans, and use the beans. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, I, I've, I've not trained myself to be a barista of sorts, but uh, uh, I, I would love to run a cafe. Uh, I might not be good at making coffee, but uh, I'd love to have a space where you know, uh, where people can come in and enjoy a good cup of coffee, um, talk, discuss, you know, have meetings, meet up with friends, catch up. You know, Hello. Be- Hello. Uh, um, there's no light, Zeus. There's no light, Zeus. There's, there's no light. What happened? Right, right, right. There's no. There's our, no, our, no. our. Someone in the chat asked him why is it so dark. So we said there's no light. That's the machine. Yeah, this, the light doesn't work. So does half our lights work in our house? Does anyway. Well, we well. lost two lights. Okay, that's fine. No, three lights. We haven't fixed any of okay, them. Okay, um... Yes, no family. Um... Do you have cats? Or any pet? Hello? Is there, is there a problem? Uh, I got... Can, can you hear us? Yeah, we can. I can I can hear you. Okay, we can hear you as well. Okay, I, th- you I, th- just, I thought... You just stared into the screen. Would your coffee shop have cats, or do you have any pets at home? I, well, we do have cats that come in and out of the house. Uh, but it's not exactly my own pet. I've always liked cats. Uh, yes. In fact, when when I was in school, uh, my my nickname was Cat. <laughs> did you believe, did you believe that? Yeah. Wait. So, wait. As a teacher or when you were a student? When I was a student, yeah. Was I, when I was in school. Uh, that was in secondary school. I was in form when I was 13 till I was about 17. Yeah, form 5. Do you have any pets at home? We no, live in an apartment. We have a fish. We have a few fish. I forgot to feed. Give me a moment. Yeah, but other than that, we don't have any pets. We want to have pets, but the management's not too friendly. So you, you're not allowed to in an apartment, huh? Okay, you can, you can have a goldfish maybe, right? Yeah. So what does Mikael have as a pet? We, we just have fish. You have fish, okay. okay. Normal river fish, nothing, nothing fancy. Just normal river. Hello. Alright, why did everyone I'm call sleepy. you cat? Why did everyone call you cat? Why? Uh, well, because um, I was very fond of cats. I liked cats and... Uh, there was one time we had a we had a, a stowaway kitten who was trapped under the because uh, I went to a boarding school so I I stayed uh, at the school where I go to um, so there was a there was a small kitten who was trapped under the uh, cupboard and uh, I somehow managed to uh, attract the kitten to get out so so everybody thought that I was. I was kind of uh, mm, very fond of cats and very cat friendly, uh, and I think the rest is history. They started calling me Cat as a nickname. Well, they got stuck with me until I was up to form five. How old was the cat? Can you like give me an estimate? Mm, probably a month or two, maybe. A month small, old. basically. Yeah, small. really small. Yeah. Small like Very this. Small, boy. small like this is newborn. Okay. Small boy. Small. This is like I don't know. I'm I'm a small boy. This is how old like a two or three month cat is. How many weeks? 
How many of you searchers are working at MMU today? How how many? Can you say that again? How many? Sorry, researchers. Researchers. Um, uh, there will be about five hundred or so. Yeah, because we have we have two campuses, one in Malacca and the other one in uh, Cyberjaya. Mm, there's about ten different faculties. Each one is easily about fifty or sixty of them. Yeah, so that makes it around 50, five, oh, sorry, about 500 of them doing different kinds of research, of course. Uh, some are into uh, engineering stuff, material sciences. Um, some are into computer science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, stuff like that. Um, those in social science are into management, knowledge management, um, accountancy and stuff. Um, then we have those who are in law, we have people in uh, creative multimedia looking at uh, animation, uh, at the, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, storytelling, uh, filmmaking, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that summarizes uh, the researchers that we have at MMU. All right. Um, does MMU have care? Say again. Does MMU have cats? Oh yeah, we've got a lot of cats lying around on the. But I'm not sure. We've we've not been to the campus for a while now. Um, Probably. There might be, there might be less because uh, there's not much food on campus these days. Um, they might have migrated elsewhere. But yeah, we used to have a lot. We used it's to have at least two in our lab. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure they took over the school and made it their own camping ground. Mm, yeah, yeah. War <laughs> on humanity. So, is there any funny stories? Any funny stories about cats? Not about, about any, any, about any, 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 any work, anything. About anything? Oh, wow. Well. Oh, you got, you got me there. Um, nom, 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 nom. Well, now that you ask me, I, I can think of one. Uh, I might might think about it. I might think of one later. Okay. Uh, so what? Okay. So, and any um hard points being. Is Coco, you already said that. Any hard points? Like you already said, he, you asked, is it hard? And then he said, okay, okay, no. no. Then you asked yeah. ask the original question, please. I don't know. Okay, what is your what? most research and interesting research? Uh, let me say, what is, what is this grammar? What is the most in recent interesting research being done now? What, what is the most interesting? Did you see that? Interesting and interesting research being done now. Yeah. Ah, right, right. Um, I would say, I would say, I would say it's something to do with uh, the work we we do with uh, fiber optics in uh, hospitals, uh, mainly to do with uh, radiotherapy. You know, sometimes when people who get cancer and they uh, need to uh, make themselves better, they go for radiotherapy. Uh, we, we've been working with doctors then in the hospitals using fiber optics, trying to understand uh, the amount of doses or the amount of radiation that we we give to the patients to cure them so so these fiber optics are really uh, very um, very sensitive very accurate uh, in ability to measure radiation doses and uh, and we hope to see this being used in hospitals so that um, cancer patients can get better treatment so that they can get well faster better uh, without having to suffer any um, uh, 
possible burns and and other side effects. Yeah, so so I think that's that's been really interesting because you know we get to learn many new things, we get to see uh, meet new people, uh, do um, new uh, studies uh, relating to this, um, and it's been going on for the past um, five six years now, and it's still going on. Uh, there's a lot of things that we are we are exploring. So this. What are, what are the ideas you have for fiber optics? What are the ideas we have for fiber optics? Can we predict the weather? Actually, yes, we would like to do that. Uh, we are trying to now work with, um, as I mentioned, fiber optics can do a bit of uh, uh, sensing. So, so it can sense quite a number of things. Now, some of it is uh, related to um, the weather. Now, for example, we can we're trying to use fiber optics uh, in the ground to detect uh, ground movement, uh, and this is um, well, it's not exactly the weather, uh, but it's more of trying to detect um, if there is going to be a landslide. Yes. Good. But yeah, like, it could be more useful for like earthquakes and like. Effects. Maybe tornadoes could be possible as well. Tsunamis could be. Yeah, yeah, actually, it could. yeah, it's possible. If you have the fiber optics laid on the in the seabed, then I guess it would be possible. Yeah. Yeah, but that means like, like the, the like the that means if you want to surround America, we have fiber optics to scan, continue to scan without the thing. Like, fiber optics has to be like. Wait, let me go. How very big is the USA? At least like five Malaysians. Wait, um, um, basically one nine hundred nine thousand mil. Okay, no, sorry, ten thousand mil. Sorry, ten ten thousand. Oh. Nine thousand point six hundred and no eight hundred thirty four. Million km square, so you would need a lot. Then it if it's like if it yeah so basically, I have I forgot, like I'm, I don't know why I tried to mess up. So if you see like these wires here, this is how like this is like think of putting this headphone, circling the entire of ten thousand ten thousand million km. Mm hmm. Well, um, to, to, we probably have longer than that going around, uh, going around the, the globe because uh, the fiber optics are being used to connect uh, different parts of the world today. So we have uh, intercontinent, uh, we call them submarine cables. These are cables that go uh, under the sea and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of longer than 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 going one round uh, the globe. Yeah, so there's a lot of these uh, submarine cables running across the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, the Indian Ocean, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So we could use some of them to sense uh, tsunamis or movement uh, in the sea in the seabed. Uh, and that could be used as an early warning for uh, tsunamis, like you said. How did you put the fiber optics into the ground? How? 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 Well, um, if it is uh, if it is on on uh, on shore, uh, uh, on land, uh, pretty much it's uh, a lot of trenching. Uh, so there's a lot of digging, uh, uh, making trenches so that these uh, fiber optic cables can be laid uh, in the ground. Um, if it is uh, out in the sea, um, there there is a there is a big ship that uh, that carries the submarine cable, and uh, as the ship uh, travels out in the sea, it lowers down the submarine cables and they get laid 
uh, on the on the seabed. Mm. Um, is it environmentally friendly if you live in the ocean? Fiber optic cables and you dig everywhere. Is it friendly to the environment? Well, they don't. They don't exactly uh, pollute or, or produce any yes, toxic uh, waste or anything like that. Uh, these cables are being managed, and and whenever they're not in use, I guess they are then. Um, um, retracted and, and put to good uh, to, to waste uh, and they are managed being managed not in such a way that it doesn't uh, pollute and harm the environment. Um, please uh, please tell us about your role as an advisor to deputy minister of North Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I, I don't uh, spend all my time um, there at the ministry, uh, but I do get uh, dragged into discussions and meetings um, where I would uh, provide some uh, advice, some uh, uh, input into those meetings and discussions. Uh, whether it's related to COVID-19, for example, um, the vaccination uh, plan, uh, and goes all the way to other initiatives in the ministry, for example, um, the ones relating to uh, technology, such as uh, blockchain, 5G and 6G, and so on, uh, and all the way to some uh, planning uh, strategies to roll out technology in the country. Yeah, but yeah, but I don't spend that much time to be honest, because uh, it gets stretched out with my work at the university as well, because I'm still a, a full time uh, professor and uh, full time uh, academic at the university. Uh, but at the same time, I do spend some time um, advising the deputy minister on of science. Yeah. And speaking of um, universities, how long have you worked there? I've been in MMU for the past uh, 23 years. I was there in 1998. Um, when I graduated in 97, I, yeah, so I was so pretty much I've been there 23 years, almost the entire of my working life, yeah. What's your typical work day? I, I didn't get you. Say, can you say that again? What's your typical work day? What's my all? Oh, I think it's when uh, when we run experiments or when we do work and you know our ideas don't really work according according to what we thought it would. Um, that makes it a bit, uh, uh, you know, a bit more challenging. But uh, again, I think it's uh, it's a good problem to have. Um, I always try to be positive and say, you know, let's let's uh, try something else. Uh, maybe this doesn't work. Maybe another solution would, and uh, it keeps us going. Yeah. But when when you hit the snag, yes, I. I won't say that. Uh, I won't lie to say that. You know, we're all happy. Uh, there are times when uh, we 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 feel a bit down because it doesn't work, but we continue to see other things. Um, is your um, well, you've been working there for over twenty years. Is that correct? Yeah, I've been there for now almost uh, twenty twenty three years now. Yeah. That's older than me and my Sarah combined. <laughs> uh, how, does one, how does one be a lecturer? Say again, please. How does one be a lecturer? Oh, okay. Um, I guess there's a few ways. 
um, when you could uh, be trained in the area that you want to teach in. Or for example, I wanted to be an engineer and I wanted to teach others to become an engineer. So first I needed a degree uh, in uh, engineering. After getting a degree in engineering, I guess there are two broad choices. One is to work in the industry. So you could work in a manufacturing plant or you could work with a consulting engineering firm or you could work um, with a R&D house uh, to do engineering work in the industry and later on uh, choose to become um, a lecturer. So you sort of join the university to become a lecturer. In my case, I worked with the industry only for a very short while, about six months before I decided to go uh, and become a full-time academic uh, a lecturer. So, so I joined the university as a tutor when I graduated from my degree. And um, at that point, I became a tutor and started doing my master's and later my PhD. And uh, that, led to, that led to me becoming a lecturer in academic and finally a professor in the university. How did, how did you become a researcher? Uh, okay, um, one who teaches at the university, uh, you could call him a lecturer, a professor, an academic. Um, research is uh, very much part of the job. So, so I guess if you ask me how did I become a researcher, I think the PhD, um, you know, doing a PhD was the entry point. Um, by doing the PhD, I got the necessary training, uh, how to uh, do research, how to become a good researcher. Um, and after completing my PhD, I guess uh, it just went on to do different uh, research uh, topics. And, uh, and that's what... Uh, led to what I am today as a, as a researcher, yeah. As a researcher, get to travel? Uh, yeah, quite a bit actually. Uh, uh, we do a lot of traveling uh, when doing research, um, especially if it's, uh, you know, at um, field uh, test sites. Um, I do travel a lot to different um hospitals, uh, doing research at the hospitals. Um, there's a lot of meetings that we go to with the, the hospitals or engineering companies. Uh, I do a lot of traveling also, uh, presenting at uh, seminars, uh, conferences. You get invited to talk uh, at different uh, um, events or conferences. Uh, but of course, during uh, MCO for the past one and a half years, we've been We've been at home. Uh, most of our traveling are, are virtual. It's all uh, online uh, presentation. How many countries have you been to? I've been to, uh, let me see, probably about 10. Whoa. I think so, yeah. Can you, can you tell us your experience? Okay, I didn't catch that. What did you What did you do in the country you've been to? Okay, it, uh, um, I the most of them were were invitations to speak at conferences. So I would uh, go to these uh, conferences where there's a lot of. Uh, people who, who do research in similar uh, area, similar topics with similar interests. Uh, so I would speak to them and share with them, you know, what research we have done, some of the uh, results uh, we discuss, we talk about, you know, how to move forward, solve some problems. Um, and a lot of these um, um, conferences, 
uh, later evolve into collaboration, some of the work that we do together. Um, uh, for example, I, I've done um, some collaboration with uh, um, a researcher in India. I've done one uh, with uh, in China. Uh, I've done with one in, in the UK. Um, so whenever we have a lot of this collaboration going on, we also spend time uh, doing the research together when we travel uh, and there are places. So, so those 10 countries are like, um, where have I been? Uh, I've been to Shanghai, China. I've been to uh, Korea. I've been to Japan. I've been to UK. I've been to Turkey. I've been to India. I've been to Bangladesh. Um, I've been to, yeah, how, how did you keep count how many countries there? Yeah, I think those are some of the countries that I've been to. Sorry, I want to drink water. Is it expensive to study to become, is it expensive to study to become a lecturer and a researcher? Uh, well, if you think about it, it's not that expensive because the entry level would have been uh, getting yourselves a bachelor's degree. So with a bachelor's degree, you could, you know, join a university as a postgraduate student or become a tutor and then move on from there. And um, usually when you are already um, working in the university, you'd be doing your master's and you'll be doing your PhD. And most of the time you'll get a scholarship to do that as well. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so is, um, sorry, um, sorry, um, would you change your job if you could, like, be a programmer, scientist, or what would you, if you would change your job, or are you fine with what you have? No, I, I'd stick to what I, whatever I'm doing now. <laughs> no, really, I would. <laughs> Did you have an idea that you, like, were you like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor, oh, I'm going to be a nurse, I don't, like, what, what kind of, like... Did you have any dream of jobs when you were younger? Um, if there was one, um, like I said earlier, I would, I would actually run a cafe. Um, I would run a cafe with, uh, with uh, serving very good coffee. Um, uh, a line on, on bakery stuff um, and, and would have lots of books uh, on, on, on the wall, shelves, uh, where people can come in, um, chit chat, meet, read books, spend time uh, and I could go on and, and meet them, talk to them as well. Um, I think I, I, I love to meet people and talk uh, and when we get to learn a lot from them. So, yeah, of course, it'd be Why would you sell at a cafe? Say yeah. again? What would you sell yeah. there? Normally, yeah. there is yeah. coffee. Yeah. I think, yeah, it would be, you know, really good coffee, uh, something they'd enjoy. Um, um, uh, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if uh, Kwetia Goreng will go well with, uh, with coffee, but uh, probably we'll do lots of pastries. Um, yeah. Stout cake sounds very good, though, I have I'm hungry. Yeah, we're both hungry. We're hungry now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like, so you're like pita What toast and eggs? Like toast and eggs. Say again. Toast and eggs. I, like, I didn't get that one. That you can like sell toast and toast and eggs. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like, would you be open for breakfast and tea, or which way? What time would you close? Late at night or? I'm I'm a very uh, early person. Um, there are times when you know I go out and look for a coffee really early in the morning. Not all the time, but because uh, I usually make my own. Um, but I and, and at those times you you really wish that uh, the cafes would open. So so if you ask me, I I would if I had a choice, I'd have my cafe open. Um, as early as uh, maybe 7.30, maybe? I'll do that. I'll do that first. Um, uh, what, what, what are your two patterns on? 
Oh, the pen, the patents. The patents are on uh, one is uh, related to uh, to um, we call it a radiation uh, dosimeter, radiation uh, measurement. Yeah, uh, how to measure radiation using fiber optics. The other is uh, related to uh, fabrication of optical fibers. So how a new technique on how we make optical fiber. Yeah. Uh, how many years did you have to study to become a lecturer? Um, I was, uh, well, I guess putting those years together, a bachelor's degree, which I did for three years. I did my master's for about, well, I did it part time, so um, actual years went between 19, 1999 and 2001, or 1998 and 2001. So that's like three and a half years. I did my PhD from the year 2002 till 2007. So that's like five years. Oh, of course, it was part time. Yeah, so so you just add those together, five, five and three and three, so that's like uh, eleven. Eleven years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your shortest project? Or your shortest project. My shortest project. My shortest project. Mm. Most of them were were, I think, like at least a year. Uh, I think the shortest one was about a year, which is still going on. <laughs> when is the longest part? Is it, like the one you just said, is it, what's the longest one you've worked on? The longest one that we have, um, I think the one that we are uh, working on this radiation dosimeter. Of course, it's been in two different parts, uh, smaller ones, but it's been ongoing, you know, one after the other since 2000. I think we started 2013 to be to be exact. Yeah. So so it's been going on till till today. That's currently your longest project. Say again. So that's your longest project. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Because so it's, it's still going on. What is like like what's like what's the difference between normal internet and then fiber internet? Well, to the to the users, uh, it's pretty much the same. Um, you you don't get to uh, differentiate whether it's uh, whether it is um, shall we say um, the data went through microwave or mobile data or or fiber optics. Uh, but uh, I would say fiber optics tend to give you bigger uh, bandwidth, uh, larger, higher speed. So, so as a user, you probably experience, uh, you know, very low latency, very high bandwidth, very, very fast internet. Uh, if you were to be using uh, fiber optics compared to other mediums, yeah. So, what's the most interesting related you and your colleagues, colleagues are doing? What is the most, sorry? the most interesting research you and your colleagues are doing? Uh, the most interesting, okay. Um, I think the for me, the most interesting would, have, would be the one relating to uh, radiation measurement. Uh, the one that I mentioned earlier, working with, uh, with doctors in the hospital, trying to measure uh, how much radiation we are giving to uh, cancer patients. Yeah, so that's that's very, I think that's, that's interesting, challenging. Um, and I think what drives and makes us go on is um, you know, it's something that is going to be very impactful, very meaningful. It's going to help a lot of uh, cancer patients out there, uh, help hospitals give better services to, to these patients. So, so I think because it's going to be very meaningful and impactful, um, we, we are, you know, continuing to do this. 
uh, research. Is your job dangerous? Mm, no, I don't think so. No, it's not so dangerous. Uh, well, because uh, even if it, if there's any research that's um, risky, um, exposes uh, us as researchers to any danger, um, there's a lot of uh, precaution, a lot of safety uh, measures, uh, rules, regulations that we have to follow uh, to make sure that you know uh, that we we are safe and and we are not exposed to any any danger. How do you define success? How do I define success? Um, I, for me, uh, success is when you get a lot of satisfaction. You really enjoy and are happy to see what you do. I think that's that's a success to me. And uh, and what gives me satisfaction is when you know that you really made a difference in in uh, in what you do. For example, I think in my life as a researcher, as a, an academic, um, I put two things. One is when we teach. Uh, in class and you know when you really see um, your students are successful they graduate uh, when you see they smile in class you you can tell the expression when they enjoy the class they understand what you've been uh, teaching talking about uh, that gives you that gives me and I think many other academics uh, a lot of satisfaction and I think what, when when you when when you get this kind of satisfaction, that's a success uh, to me. Um, the 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 other uh, success uh, satisfaction is when you do research, and you realize that what you do in research really contributes to making um, lives better, easier, um, safer. So you've really made some impact uh, in making sure that you know um, life um, is safe. Um, the, the lives have made have been made uh, easier, um, uh, much more uh, fulfilling, and so on. So that's that's when you really get that sense of satisfaction. And I think when you get that satisfaction, you are successful. Yeah. How do you define fail, and have you failed in any of your researches before? Oh uh, yeah, definitely we've we've failed. Uh, I mean, fail failure, um, um, not being able to achieve what you uh, intend to achieve, or not being able to achieve what you plan. Uh, but I've always felt that failure is uh, temporary. Um, it's a, a, a delayed uh, success, so it's just a matter of tweaking, um, uh, continue to do things differently uh, in a more innovative, different way, um, then you'll get to success. But yeah, we have, I have failed uh, not once, but many times, but, uh, but it's always good to fail because every time you fail, you learn Something new, yeah. Really, the part of success, a wise man once said, I, I don't know who. Yeah, so, that's, that's good. Because no one is good at drawing. Like, okay, I'm gonna take drawing as an example. No one is good at drawing. Everyone has draws lopsided circle, poor D shape. Some people can draw perfect Still, it's not easy to learn how to draw. Most people are not good at drawing. Anyway. But if you practice it, then that's good. Yeah, yeah fail, exactly, you know exactly. Yeah. If you know what went wrong, you can get better. Exactly, yeah. Good, good, you're smart. That's, that's why that's why people record their, their like, the, what, record themselves to see what they're doing wrong. So just like, wait, do you actually, speaking of recording, do you record your footage? Like, you write them in notepad on, like, like a How notebook. do you keep track of all your research? Spreadsheet. 
use. Wait, I have a question. How do you keep track? No, like, how do you keep track of the research you've done? Like, okay, so when I did this research, then it failed. So let's try this one. How do you keep track of all that? How do you keep track of like, like, how do you keep track of your work? Like, this failed, oh, okay. this one um, a while. I, yeah, I rely a lot on uh, Google stuff uh, from uh, calendar to tasks, uh, to to do list. So I, I've got them on, on Google tasks. Um, I use my emails a lot to track things to do so so whenever people need me to do different things or I need other people to do other things um, I usually track using these three things um, my 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 mail my gmail my um, uh, google calendar and also a google task is to keep everything in place yeah so so I I have over the years developed uh, uh, a good skill of deleting emails uh, or uh, archiving them. So I've got a really nice lean uh, inbox uh, and essentially whatever mail I have left in the inbox are things that I've yet to complete. Uh, so it, it sort of doubles as a to-do list as well. So yeah, I, and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm really good at deleting emails as well these days, yeah. A lot of junks go out uh, really quick, um, so that tends to, uh, you know, uh, give me inner peace and calm, <laughs> tranquility at some point, especially when you have very clean inbox. Um, how do you do it, Celia? How, how do I do it? Sorry. How do you deal with failure? Failure. How do you deal with failures? Uh, well, um, I I think that I. I think one that I've done is to accept the fact that um, there will be failures, uh, you know, and uh, we'll do things, we'll, we'll explore stuff, do research, um, do many other things, uh, but there will be um, times when you will fail. Um, and uh, if we look at failure positively, it's all a matter of looking at what went wrong and uh, moving forward with how do we correct what went wrong and do things better in the future. I have a question. Okay, um, I have a question. Um, what, was your, what was your favorite um, subject in school? My favorite subject in school was actually chemistry. That's Ooh. new. Yeah, but uh, sadly, I never got to do much uh, work in chemistry these days. Uh, a lot of it were electronics, physics, uh, uh, but chemistry, I remember in school, was some of the most uh, more interesting, you know, going to the lab, look at how, you know, doing different experiments. Um, how do you start new research and what other Let's say that again, please. How do you start a new research and what are the steps? Ah, okay. Uh, I think when, when, uh, when uh, we were junior researchers, uh, a lot of the research were, were from uh, other journals, just looking at what other researchers do and try to see if they've not looked at certain topics, certain uh, problems. Uh, so that leaves a gap. But uh, these days, I try to work with the industry. So, so when, what I do research is when we have meetings with the industry, try to understand how to solve their problems. And, and later on, when we do uh, research, we would come up with solutions that would help them make their products better, make their services uh, faster, and so on. Yeah, so these days I have a lot of meetings, discussions with uh, the industry. It's very interesting. Um, um, do you have any last words for the 
on sorry last word last words last words oh, okay is the end is it oh time flies um well i guess um, if uh, there are out there anyone who would like to become an academic or researcher um, um i i think it's it's been very uh, it's been very uh, uh, interesting for me uh, it's been very challenging um, the nice part of it is uh, you get a lot of freedom to explore uh, your interest you can meet new people you can do and solve interesting problems and at the end of the day you'll be able to achieve success you'll be able to leave some impact on society uh, see how you know your your graduates students that you teach um, leave the university become better people um, lead in their you know in their own work and, uh, and 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 I've been doing this for the past 22 years, and I've not looked back or regretted any part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, you for spending your time with us. Thank you. Uh, Tomorrow, main host. Thank you. Tomorrow. Thank you for spending your time with us on a Sunday. Tomorrow, we're going to. Piloting At instructor Auntie Hanzini. Wow. Okay, that must be that must be interesting too. Yeah. yeah time what what time are you going on air tomorrow again? Eight thirty p.m. Malaysia time. And okay. on weekdays, on weekdays is eight thirty. Yes. On weekends it's two p.m. All right. I'll try and catch the pilot instructor. That'd be nice. Thank you. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Assalamualaikum. Bye. Hello.